Welcome, welcome to the to Broadhead High, High School Co-Curricular, Co-Curricular Handbook, Handbook Meeting. I welcome parents, guardians, and students. Co-curricular activities are activities in which students appear, perform, and or compete as representatives of Broadhead High School. These activities include athletics, FFA, show choir, jazz band, cheerleading, forensics, musicals, school plays, student council, class officers, youth to youth, and equestrian team. For the purpose of this code, service-oriented clubs, student publications, and internal student groups are excluded. Activities in which students pre-present Broadhead High School Disciplinary Code and are not considered co-curricular activities. All parents of students involved in code activities must view this video before their son or daughter can be eligible to participate. You will find that in a later slide in our presentation. The code must then be signed by the parent or guardian and handed in to the coach advisor. This must be done by one parent once a year. Fostering a good parent-coach relationship. Communication is the key for everyone to be successful. Coaches should communicate to players and parents. Parents need to communicate to coaches. We ask that you never talk to a coach directly following a contest, unless it is a positive one. Talk the following day and please contact them while they are in school and set up a time to talk. Our coaches are very busy while in season and calling them at home takes away from the small amount of family time they are allocated. Playing time issues should be addressed in the following steps. Number one, have your son or daughter talk to the coach and express their concerns. Number two, set up a meeting with the coach yourself and your son or daughter must be present. The third step would be to contact the athletic director and express the concern along with the coach and your son or daughter. The last one, step number four, would be to contact the principal and have a meeting with the principal, athletic director, coach, and your son or daughter. Any concern about the coaches other than playing time should be directed to the athletic director. The goal of all the coaches is the same as you as a parent. They want to help the athletes achieve their goals and learn to prepare for the life's lessons. Responsibilities. Your greatest responsibility is to be a credit to your parents, school, and community. Therefore, it is required that you display outstanding character and sportsmanship, display proper respect for those in authority, display a spirit of cooperation, dress with special care whenever representing our school, use language and act in a manner that is socially acceptable, develop individual determination, self-discipline, and learn to set goals, become part of the team, learn the concept of teamwork, and develop with a sense of pride for the individual and group effort. Academic Eligibility Standards A student will become scholastically ineligible if he or she receives two failures in any nine-week semester grading period or if he or she is not passing a minimum of five courses that are accepted for graduation credits. In determining ineligibility, nine-week grades will be used for the first and third quarters and semester grades will be used for the second and fourth quarters. At the four and a half week progress report date, the student cannot receive more than one F progress report in order to regain eligibility. Students may regain eligibility before the four and a half week progress report if the failing grade was a result of incomplete work. The acceptance of the incomplete work is at the teacher's discretion. Any student not regaining eligibility will be dropped from the squad team for the remainder of the season. A student must be in good academic standing to start the year in jazz band or show choir and must also be in good standing at the four and a half week progress report of the second quarter to remain eligible for the year. Use or possession of tobacco products, e-cigarettes and or alcohol controlled substances. The use or possession of any tobacco, e-cigarettes, and or alcohol or other controlled substances is prohibited by this code and the WIAA. It is also a violation of this code to be in attendance at any party, location, or function where these prohibited substances are being used or consumed in violation of this code or state statutes. All infractions in this area will be dealt with the suspension from the sport or activity. 
the length of the suspension is defined in the individual section pertaining to each activity in this code book. School attendance on practice and event days. Students may not compete, perform, or practice on days of suspension, three hours or more, in school or out of school. A student must be in school to attend practice, compete, or perform. If a student is not well enough to attend school, they are not well enough to participate in the co-curricular activity. Students must be in school attendance by 9 a.m. and may not miss more than one period during the day in order to participate in the co-curricular activity. Repeated problems will be dealt with by the discretion of the principal or designee. Exceptions to this are excused school trips and appointments that are approved by the principal or designee. It is inevitable that some practices, performance events, and games will be scheduled during the school vacation times. It is an expe expectation that each participating student will dedicate him or herself to their co-curricular activities and we encourage families to do their best in setting up their schedule so that their student does not miss events. Behavior or actions on becoming a person representing our school. Disruptive behavior in the school. This would consist of fighting, vandalism, stealing, extreme disrespect, or other actions in which the administration deals with through suspension. This is not to say that all suspensions will result in a co-curricular code violation but only the most serious. Violations of the criminal code and or illegal acts, this would be any activities outside the school that are poorly represented brought at high school. All consequences here would be the same as those in letter B, use or possession of tobacco products, alcohol, and controlled substances in this section. Examination permit card. A student may not participate in interscholastic athletics until the school has an examination permit card on file in its office attesting to a parental permission and a physical fitness as determined by authorized medical personnel. It is also recommended that students have dental fitness as determined by a licensed dentist. Those cards can be picked up in our high school office. Sign co-curricular code. Any student participating in co-curricular activities must, along with their parents, sign the agreement to follow the code of conduct during their participation at Broadhead High School. This must be turned in before starting an activity. This must be completed yearly, beginning with the student's first activity. Transfer eligibility. A student who transfers from any school with the status of ineligibility for disciplinary or academic reasons retains such status at Broadhead for the same period as decreed by his or her former school. If the student transfers to Broadhead and is ineligible according to the Broadhead Co-Curricular Code, then the student will be deemed ineligible until the student meets the requirement of this code. Advisors Coaches Provisions In addition to the provisions of this code, all co-curricular participants are expected to follow the rules and regulations as established by their coach, director, or advisor. These rules will be distributed to every participant prior to the start of an activity or season. Athletic rules and regulations must be filed by coaches with the athletic director who must approve the rules before distribution. Co-curricular rules and regulations must be filed with the principal who must approve the rules before distribution. All coaches and advisors rules must be within the framework of this code. Joining a second same season team. No student who, who is dropped from one squad for disciplinary reasons or quits shall be eligible to compete in another sport for that partic particular season without mutual agreement of both coaches. After the second contest has been played, no student may move from one sport to another. However, any student who is cut from a squad may compete in another sport during that season. Just a reminder via the Rock Valley Conference, no athlete may participate in two sports in the same season. Travel. Anytime a student travels to or from an event, they need to ride to and from the event under school approved supervision. The only exception to this is when there has been both written and verbal confirmation from the parent of the student to allow alternate transportation. This must be done on the approved school form. 
Injuries. Any student who received an injury during a co-curricular practice or event must report the injury to the coach or advisor at once. If a student has any special medical problems, be sure that the coach or advisor is informed in advance. A certified trainer service is available to the Broadhead High School students. Please sign up in the office if you would like to see our athletic trainer. Our athletic trainer is available twice a week. The school district of Broadhead does not provide any type of health or accidents insurance for injuries incurred by your child during or at co-curricular activities. Equipment. Each student is responsible for the equipment issued to him or her. Care labels should be carefully followed when washing the uniform. This equipment must be returned in good condition at the end of the activity. Failure to return such equipment shall result in one or several of the following. Seniors on varsity squads. Seniors may compete at the varsity level only. The only exception would be in case of foreign exchange students. Enforcement of the co-curricular code. Penalties for violations of the co-curricular code shall be administered as directed by this handbook. The enforcement of this code will be the primary responsibility of all advisors and coaches. The administration of the code will be handled by the athletic director for all the matters concerning athletics and the principal for all other activities. The co-curricular code of the conduct starts the first day that student signs the code and joins an activity and is in effect for all 12 months of the year. Violations of the code will be cumulative during a student's high school career. Reports of the code violations shall be presented to the athletic director and reports for all other activities will pre be presented to the principal. Reports are not to be made to board members, the superintendent, or members of the school staff. Reports shall document the nature, place, time, and date of the violation and must be signed by the person turning in the violation. Violations of the code may also be enforced based on reports confirmed by law enforcement officials or self-admission. There is no timeline for reports from police officials. If a report is, in the judgment of the athletic director or principal, a valid one, the student will be given an opportunity to discuss the charges. If the student admits that the charges are true, he or she will receive the consequences according to this code. If he or she denies the charges, the athletic director or principal will complete an investigation and make a determination as to the truth within two school days. A formal letter will be sent to the student and his or her parents if the student is being suspended from the activities according to the code. Students who are suspended for a code violation must still practice, rehearse, and must attend all games events unless the coach advisor determines otherwise. Appeal or due process. Appeals may be requested by the students and or parents guardians. They must be directed to the principal within five school working days of the initial decision. The appeal must be in writing and must include the rationale for the appeal. If the parents are not in agreement with the principal's decision, they may appeal in writing to the superintendent of schools within five school working days. The superintendent shall review the information from the parents and the committee and communicate within five school working days in writing the decision to the parents. If the parents of the student are dissatisfied with the decision of the superintendent, they may forward in writing an appeal to the president of the Board of Education. This appeal must be made to the president of the school board within five working school days after receiving the superintendent's decision. The president of the board will then place the appeal on the agenda of the next regular scheduled school board meeting. After the board has heard the appeal, a decision shall be communicated to the parents in writing within five working days of the hearing. The appeal process for the third violation will be the same as above except the written appeal should be sent directly to the superintendent of schools, then if dissatisfied, to the president of the school board. 
All time frames will remain the same as in the above paragraphs. The school board will, in the case of the third violation, have some discretion to shorten the year of suspension based on the plan and the appeal showing that the student will receive professional counseling and or other specific steps appropriate to the situation. Students may practice or rehearse, but are not eligible to compete or perform during the appeal process. Five school working day maximum limit are incorporated into the appeals process to assure the timely implementation of this policy. Any deviation from this procedure, including missing the specified timelines, will result in the termination of the appeal. The school district of Broadhead does not discriminate against pupils on the basis of sex, race, national origin, ancestry, creed, religion, pregnancy, marital or parental status, sexual orientation, or physical, mental, emotional, or learning disability, or handicap or any other basis prohibited by applicable federal or state law in its education program or co-curricular activities. Code Enforcement Part A Athletics First offense, the student will be suspended from 20% of the total contest in their sports. Second offense, the student will be suspended from 50% of the total contest in their sport. If the athlete agrees to school approved supervised counseling, and 10 hours of community service, the 50% would be reduced to 35%. The third and subsequent offense, the student will be suspended for one calendar year from any school sports. If the violation occurs towards the end of the season and there are not enough games left to fill the requirement percentage of the suspension not served, shall be recalculated and applied toward the next sport in which the athlete participates. Any student having a code violation during a season will forfeit the privilege of having their name submitted for any special awards, state or conference, or team honors during the season in which the code violation was committed. Here's an example of a suspension guide. These are based on the average number of contests. Though in basketball and baseball, basketball is based approximately on 22 games. Baseball and softball is around the now 26 games, but these will vary. And 20% is based on that season's total. Other areas. This area pertains to show choir, musical, school play, cheerleading, forensics, FFA, jazz band, class officers, student council, and youth to youth. First offense is 20 hours of community service as determined by the administration. Community service must be completed in a timely manner with at least five hours completed a week and must be completed in consecutive weeks. Second offense, suspension from membership for the remainder of the year. As you see, is a code curricular agreement that is attached and both parent and student must sign this. You will find attachments at the end of the slide presentation. As well as signing the code sheet, you must bring in the concussion form signature as well and attach article with the concussions is found at the end of the slide show as well. I can't say enough about getting involved with our booster club. Our booster club has been a big financial booster for all of our athletics in our athletic department. The one big thing besides going to meetings is to sign up for concession stand help. If your son plays on a Friday night, for example, get involved with our middle school football and then vice versa. To sign up for concession stand help, please contact Elaine Beskup at ebeskup at bankofbroadhead.com. Our athletic trainer is Dylan Whitman. Dylan Whitman is here periodically, once or twice per week. Again, make sure that you sign up in the office on the forms on the counter. He'll be glad to help you. He is through the Monroe Clinic Hospital. Press Box fundraising campaign. The Press Box fundraising campaign is well underway and we are still thousands away from meeting our goal. If you'd like to 
if you'd like a donation sheet, you can either contact me. I'll be more than happy to send you a page or go online to our Broad Athletic webpage and you can find under resources a sheet as well. You'll pay the $20 sports fee at the time of registering your child for the 2017-2018 school year. You'll get a pink sheet with documentation that you have paid. Attached, you'll find the three resources mentioned earlier in the slideshow presentation. First one is the entire athletic handbook. Please read this over with not only yourself, but with your child. Second one, you must print off and sign the athletic code sheet at the end of the handbook and bring in during time of registration, as well as the concussion sheet as well. I thank you for your time and I look forward to a great 2017-2018 school year. I have hope that this online presentation of our athletic handbook has been beneficial for you in a season of a very busy, busy schedule. I look forward to working with your student athletes and here's to a positive 2017-2018 school year.